Kia ora tātou, tēnā koutou, no mai, haere mai. Welcome to Lake Karapiro for the 2022 Canoe Sprint Nationals. This is the event that New Zealand's best want to bring it each and every year. And don't be fooled by those smiles. A lot of hard work goes on behind the scenes and on the water to ensure everyone performs at their best and everything runs smoothly. Well, coming up, we have nine races for you to enjoy. Five over the 200 metre distance and four over the 500 metre distance. And all eyes on the women's final with the Canoe Racing New Zealand Elite Squad members competing after taking last year off. And what better way to start than with the K1 500 metres final featuring multiple Olympic champion Dame Lisa Carrington and the current world champion Amy Fisher. Yes, what a race this promises to be as we check out the field and throw it over to commentator John Macbeth. They're away. And the usual splash from the likes of Fisher and particularly Carrington as they leave the start area for this grand final of the K1 500 for women. World champion Fisher in lane four in the white top. Next to her is Alicia Hoskin, Olympian. Then Carrington, Olympic champion, multiple Olympic champion. She's in the black in lane six to Neil Hatton in seven. You'll be able to pick them as they come through that 200. Looks as though Carrington has just a slight edge, has she? No, maybe not, it's very, very close. Fisher, Carrington, Carrington hits that 200 first. Fisher now powering. Lisa Carrington in lane six. That remarkable Olympic games that she had, where she became the country's most successful Olympian. She knows there's a major attack coming on her from Amy Fisher, who went out and won the World Championship. Thrilling finish. Carrington just. Fisher. Oh, Fisher maybe. Gee, that was close. Better eyes than me need that one. What a great finish, as you'd expect, from two of the world's best, Lisa Carrington and Amy Fisher. Well, what a race, and it just looked like Fisher may have had a bit more gas in the tank at the end of the race there. What a stunning upset. Not often you see Dame Lisa Carrington beaten on the water, but it's happened today. Well, to be the best, you've got to beat the best. And that's what Amy Fisher, the 27-year-old, has done today. And you can see what it means to her. Emotions absolutely pouring out of her. What a win for her. And that is a class act from Lisa Carrington, congratulating her rival. <laughs> it was just so beautiful. Um, there's, there's just so much love and un unconditional support from everyone here today. And I felt it out there. I felt it on my heart and I carried everyone with me in the boat and... <laughs> pretty special. You had an amazing finish. Talk us through that, that last 100 metres. Everything was seizing up and locking up. And I just thought, you know, I thought of Casey, who won the Waka Nationals our trial, sorry, a couple of weeks ago and just tried to express everything I had and stay relaxed and push again and just show the kind of heart that I have. Big heart. Congratulations, Amy. National champion, women's K1 500 metres. Thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely stunning performance from Amy Fisher. Terrific effort. And she got Lisa Carrington by eight one hundredths of a second with Tanil Hatton coming home in third place, just ahead of Alicia Hoskin. Let's move to our next race. It's the Open Women's K2 500 metre final. The lanes to keep your eye on here, lane four, lane five, lane seven. They're all the canoe racing New Zealand teams. Blades are up and they're away. This is the final gold medal race, the women's K2 500. If we go back a few months, um, Hatton and Hoskin paired up. They're not uh, together in this race. They paired up at the Olympics. And of course, so too did uh, Carrington and Regal, who won that fabulous race, the final race in Tokyo. But now we're back to national championships. In lane one, the Arawa Club looks strong. Alongside in Poverty Bay in lane three, they move out to the centre. 
situation where Hatton and Brett from Canoe Racing New Zealand have a good start and are faced with the other Canoe Racing New Zealand combination of Hoskin and Matahiri in seven. Lane seven, coming to the 200 first. Hoskin, Matahiri. Well aware of what Brett and Hatton might have over the final 150. Strong showing from the Poverty Bay combination two in lane three and in lane four, Vaughan and Clifton. That's the battle for third between those two. The white of Poverty Bay in lane three. And the faster finishing Vaughan and Clifton from Canoe Racing New Zealand. So lane seven takes it. That's Hoskin and Matahari. Uh, inside is uh, Brett and Hatton and the other Canoe Racing New Zealand team finish, finishes in third, just ahead of Poverty Bay. A great race from Hoskin and Matahaere. Don't be confused, that isn't Hatton behind Hoskin. They're sharing boats, it is definitely Matahaere. So they win the race comfortably. And they were well clear of Olivia Brett and Tennille Hatton with Tara Vaughan and Samalulu Clifton coming home in third place. So all three Canoe Racing teams doing well. We knew we were capable of putting it together just from the training that we've been doing together. So it's always an awesome feeling when you can actually execute it on the day because that's quite a skill and sometimes the nerves get to you. So we're really proud of ourselves for doing what, what we knew we were capable of. Yeah, it's cool. Awesome. And Lucy, there in the engine room, what was your thoughts in the last 250? Well, really, I'm on the legs for Alicia's arms. So on that last bit there, I'm just trying to leave with my legs so that Alicia can really set up the boat. She did an awesome job right from the start, you know, stuck to the game plan, and, um, yeah, we really executed what we wanted to, which is awesome. Great effort from Hoskin and from Matahaere to win the national title, 147-17, just ahead of Bretton Hatton and Vaughan and Clifton in third place. Let's move to the men's K1 500 metres final. Always a great race. A couple of Tokyo Olympians in there. Max Brown right at the very top in the white boat. Also Curtis Imri in lane number seven. That's three from the top. Also keep your eye on Ben Duffy in lane number four. He's in that green boat there. And they're away in lane number five. He could be a bit of a dark horse. James Munro from Otago. Didn't compete in last year's final. Looks like Duffy and Max Brown right at the top made a very good start. And also in lane number two, Zach Firkins is showing out strongly. A great effort from those three to start with. Munro falling off the pace a little bit, as are some of the others. But at the moment, it's Duffy. Looks like he's got the barest of leads at the moment over Max Brown, who might have actually just taken the lead now. Lane number two, Zach Firkins going particularly well. Munro starting to come into a little bit of form as Ben McCullum in that pink boat. And lane number three hangs tough as well. But no changes. Duffy just keeps in front. He's a very good Paddler this lad, but he finished ninth in last year's race. The defending champ is actually Curtis Zimri. He won this title last year, but he's just falling off the pace a little bit. Now, James Munro coming into this nicely here from Otago. He's just entered the elite squad. There he is there in the orange boat right in the middle, and he's overhauled, it looks like, Duffy and Brown. This could be a big one coming up here for James Munro if he can hang on. Munro from Otago doing the business at the moment. He's holding tough. Can he finish strongly and hold off these other very fine paddlers? He looked like he's doing a great job at the moment. James Munro, the Otago paddler, it's his to lose. Munro holding off Duffy, Imri and Brown at the very top. It's still very close. Don't be fooled by that camera angle. It is very tight, but it looks like Munro might get there. Just ahead of Brown with Duffy really trying to dig deep and find something, but Munro's got him. And Brown's got second, I think, just ahead of Ben Duffy. Well, what a win there for James Munro. He ended up winning it fairly comfortably by about half a length. Brown did well to hang on to second, just ahead of Duffy. But it's all about James Munro. He's the national champion. Oh, it's an amazing, amazing field at the moment. Like, uh, 
everyone's just making it so close. So yeah, it's, it's going to take a bit for that one to sink in. You had an amazing uh, first 250 and then at the second 250 you just seemed to surge your head. What was going through your mind? Yeah, like I, I, I normally have like a strong end to my race so I was really just working hard to try and stay in touch in that first bit and then just had that good confidence that I was going to be able to come through at the end. So um, yeah, it just it really went perfectly to plan. Like I blew up just at the end with uh, just, just enough time to hold off Max. <laughs> Did really well there, James Munro, to win the race by almost a second ahead of Brown with Ben Duffy confirmed in third place just ahead of Zach Verkins and last year's champion of this event, Curtis Emery, who was fifth. Let's go to the splash and dash now, the Open Men's K4 200 metre final. Let's go to John McBeth. Two North Shore clubs in lanes four and six. In lane three, it's Eastern Bay and in lane five, Whanganui. Whanganui looking good. That's Lace, Clifton, Old and Old. On the inside of them, one of the North Shore combinations. Whanganui holding at the moment. North Shore attacking. Whanganui. Whanganui. Whanganui do get there. Just. That was close. Just trying to hang on. We saw we got a pretty good jump on them at the start, and I just got excited and trying my best to hold on. Yeah, luckily we just managed to keep them off. Big man at the back putting the putting the watts down in that last 50 meters. How did it feel? Oh, it was pretty good crossing the line. Just having a good time with the fellas. Yeah. And any thoughts here? We sitting seat two, three, three. Timing was perfect, bro. How was it? It was hard to keep up with these fellas. Yeah, yeah they were crazy, but it was me. Yeah, yeah. Great effort from the Wanganui crew to win that race. Just ahead of one of the North Shore crews, headed by Grant Clancy. And that Eastern Bay Canoe Racing team get third place. As we move now to the women's K1 200 metre final, Lisa Carrington in the field, Alicia Hoskin to Neil Hatton. It's going to be a great race, this one. Carrington, Hoskin, Hatton, all very good starts, of course, you'd expect the quickest out of the blocks would be Lisa Carrington in lane six. And look at this from this world champion, this Olympic multi-champion, Lisa Carrington. Clear water now between her and the rest, and that was after a hundred. Scintillating example of how fantastic Lisa Carrington is. Big battle for second. But it will be Elisa Hoskin who gets there just ahead of Tennille Hatton. So the three Olympians finish in the first three placings. How was it? Yeah, it was good. I mean, it's fun to get out there and have a hit out. Um, and also just to you know, race with the girls is always fun, so yeah, it's cool. You had a pretty intense regatta so far. <laughs> Tell us how it feels. Yeah, yeah, really intense. I think it's um, it's a bit of, uh, you know, a bit of, I'm being reminded of like what it takes to race. So it's been a really good weekend from that point of view. Sure has for Dame Lisa Carrington who wins this race very comfortably indeed. 40.77 seconds, Hoskins time 43.46, just ahead. Only seven one hundredths of a second ahead of Tanil Hatton. Let's move now to the K4 200 metre women's final, and that group in lane number two is stacked. They get away and instantly making an impact is the Carrington, Hoskin, Brett, and Hatton combination looking very smooth. So experienced. Perfect example of how to do it. Way up at the top there. Clifton, Matahiri, Morley and Vaughan 
That's Poverty Bay alongside. One out is North Shore Canoe. But this is Carrington and Hoskin and Brett and Hatton taking them to the line. Clifton, Matahari, Morley and Vaughan. And my word, those club crews did extremely well too. Poverty Bay and Arawa, North Shore, Bay of Plenty, Mana. Really, from the start, that explosive power from this highly talented group and remained and retained that sort of form right through to the final. But it certainly is a treat to see these superstars in action here at the 2022 NZCT Championships. So a great effort from Carrington, Hoskin, Brett and Hatton. They won convincingly 37-45 ahead of the other canoe racing New Zealand team with Poverty Bay coming home in third place. Well, here's a treat for you. It's the Open Power K1 200 metre straight final and we've got two fantastic paddlers, Scott Martlew and Corbin Hart going head to head here. And they're away, and this should be a terrific battle. We've got Corbin Hart in the red boat, Scott Martlew in the black boat, Hart from Whangapuroa and Martlew from Canterbury. They're both representatives at uh, Tokyo 2020 at the Paralympics last year. Corbin Hart, here he is, finishing in fifth place in the B final. Scott Martlew is actually a two-time Paralympian. He finished fourth, his best results, and he's really digging in, and he knows he's got a really good rival next to him, and there's nothing in it between these two. What a race we've got going here. Absolutely. Absolutely brilliant. You could throw a blanket over these pair. No one's got over the other and extended a lead of any magnitude at the moment. Really hard not to ignore your opponents. They come to the line. Look like Hart might just get there over Martlu. What a race between them. Really is fantastic effort and Hart just gets there. Oh, they'd love to have that again. Martlu probably might pinch hat on another day <laughs> nothing like a bit of showtime to uh, beat your rival Martlu and uh, they're obviously great mates too check that out there was nothing in it between Martlu and Hart and maybe just uh, Hart getting there by one paddle stroke that was good bro it's nice to actually race again and you know have our own little division and feel like it's that competition that is not toxic it's just here slogging it together trying to have a good battle yeah, yeah. oh awesome and scott what how what was your thoughts on that race yeah no yeah pretty much the same as corbin really I, um no, i had good good time and um i was trying to trying to improve on each one but obviously uh, i think corbin was getting closer to me each, each one eh? <laughs> but yeah no like you said it's it's good good to have competition and um yeah so, um, yeah, really good good banter as well. So, yeah, yeah. goes good. You guys are looking solid for uh, your next World Cup campaigns. It's a World Cups and World Champs after here. Uh, just World Champs for both of us, yeah. eh? We're not going to bother with World Cup. Yeah. So, uh, it's going to be yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah same. It's, um, yeah, just looking forward to World Champs in, in Canada in early August. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to the, the grind till then, eh? Yeah. yeah, great effort from Martlu and from Hart in that race. That open power K1 200 meter race. Let's go to the K1 200 meters men's final. There's boats in the middle to keep your eye on here. Duffy, Riser, Ferkins, Lagarth. Here's John Macbeth. Final of the K1 200 for men. They're set. And really good starts in it. Green machine of Ben Duffy was away very well indeed. But inside of him, Hamish Lagarth in lane three in the black. But look at that green boat, there it goes, that's Ben Duffy. Duffy has the lead, but all oh, way out on the far side, that's McGibbon of Arawa too. They go through that hundred and there's very little in it. And lane three, Lagarth. Lane four though, Duffy, Ferkins in five. The line comes, ten to go. What a great finish this is, and it looks as though it's going to be Ben Duffy who takes it from uh, Ashton Reiser in lane six. Great finish from those two, and in the, between them was Ferkins. And there in boat number four, 
Ben Duffy of Arawa. Gee, not much in it at all. Very, very close. As you'd expect with the elite paddlers over 200. Oh, I was bloody tired at the end there, but man, um, apparently I just hung on, but it was a tight race between me and the other boys there. So it was right down to the wire. Eh? It was always going to be a hard battle, but so happy with that, man. Yeah. You're so close. You actually had a bit of a lead the whole way. I guess you don't know when you're in the moment. What, what, you're just going for it? Yeah, man. You just have tunnel vision the whole way down the course. You know, you can't be thinking about what's going on next to you. You just got to think about that next stroke. So, yeah, I was just focusing on myself. So, yeah, I crossed the line, mate. I had no idea that I got that one. So, oh, man, it's what a relief right now. It's awesome. Well, ben Duffy wins the power race just ahead of the two-time former champion Ashton Riser with Zach Firkin grabbing third place. Let's go to the men's K2 500 meter final now. And lanes three, four, five, and six, the ones to keep your eye on. Way well this time with Brown and Imri, our Olympic representatives in lane four. This is the final of the men's K2 500. Eastern Bays, Brown and Fuller in lane one. Gilbertson and Nataki of North Shore in two. Cookamore and McGibbon of Arawa are in three. Legarth and Duffy from Canoe Racing New Zealand. To their right, it's Ferkins and Reiser, also from Canoe Racing New Zealand. And now come the challenges from Brown and Imri in lane four. They are going for it. Have they got enough time to catch up to Lagarth and Duffy? Lagarth and Duffy hold. Imri and Brown challenge. And it's Lagarth and Duffy just from Imri and Brown, and in third place will be Firkins and Reiser. Men's K2 500. That's a stunning finish for us as we head into the break. Yeah, it was such a great race. I, I looked at 100 metres to go and I thought we had it and then out of nowhere those boys came back on us and yeah, as we crossed the line I had no idea who got it and yeah, pretty stoked that Duff and I took it out. Yeah, it was a bit um, tense at the finish there but I think you guys were busy doing other things. You put your push your body to the limit. Talk us through how you felt at, at the end. Oh man, it was just nothing but pain at the end there but um, yeah, we've been wanting to get that one back ever since last year so uh, it was good to get one over those lads so yeah, we're super, super happy with that. And rightly so too, Duffy and Legarth winning it by two tenths of a second ahead of the Olympians, Brown and Emery with Firkins and Riser in third. That wraps it up from Lake Karapiro. Great spirit from all the paddlers at what's been a wonderful event. We'll catch you for more canoe sprint racing very soon.